It's about that time again. What is up? If you're watching this, that means you've got another day. We're not going to waste any time and channel my inner Bob Ross, but let's make this quick. All right, so we're going to start with the Lamborghini Performante. Very aggressive angle, very aggressive shot. So we're going to probably get rid of those happy clouds and add in some angry ones later, but we'll get to that. First step here is making sure my crop adjustment is good. I'm going to go to my presets and I'm going to use one called the Jacob Epic Light Curve. All that's doing is it adjusts my uh, black and white curve here, which is basically your shadows, etc. And uh, that will help uh, later on. And then it pre-plots points on these tone curves so that I can adjust them later. Not changing too much, but just a small adjustment that I like to start with on all my photos. Next up here is we're gonna raise up that exposure and bring some lightness into your life. Don't be afraid if it looks a little overexposed when you start bumping up the exposure in the shadows, cause guess what? Will's gonna bring you back down to reality in just a second. I'm gonna bring my whites up. Don't worry about what's going on in the clouds. It'll be okay, I promise. Now I have my brightness on my screen bumped down a couple just because I wanna be able to see this the way people see it on their phones on Instagram. So that way, if I edit a perfectly good shot but you're too dim on the phone, it's not gonna look very good. Next step is we wanna white balance. 63 white, perfect white balance location. And those yellows are already looking clean. A little bit different than the natural color, just so it's slightly different to the eye. Very pleasing, though. No? Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to crush these blacks just a tad, and then I'm going to go down to my dehaze, and I'm going to bring all that detail back in. Oh, magical. Look at all that all that comes back exactly the way that you would want it to. It's still a little dark, though, so let's bump up that, ex that exposure just a tad. Shadows, whites, everything's looking good here. I might bump up my brightness just a tad to see what's going on. Okay. I really like this one. All right, so let's go into our tone curves first. Now you could take the tone curve route if you're a risky individual, or you can go down here to the color mixer. Lately, I've been favoring the tone curve to get my colors right, and then I use the color mixer in the bottom to remove colors I don't like. I like my pavement a little blue, so I'm gonna grab that middle guy and pull him down. So the mids where my uh, pavement color is located changes just a tad. I think we're gonna leave that guy alone. Let's go to the greens and purples and see what they got going on over there. A little bit of purple action in the shadows, never hurt anybody. The green is kind of looking nice though, but I want something a little different than the yellow. So we'll give it just a touch of purple in the shadows. What about our highlights? What's going on there? Hmm. Remember, I'm gonna add in storms later. So a little green in the highlights, given that matrix look is kind of what I'm going for. What about our yellows and our blues? What do they got going on? Not too much in the shadows and the yellows and the blues. Probably gonna leave that alone. What about the mids? How's our mids life? Probably going to leave that alone as well. What about the highlights? Remember, we don't care about what's going on in the sky, so we're gonna leave that alone as well. That's all it takes for curves. See, I knew tone curves weren't that scary. Now we're gonna go to our red and see where the reds are in the photo. Really just in that stripe down there by the C63, or by the 63, always got cars on my mind. We're gonna leave that one alone. Where are the, ooh, look at that. There's orange hidden in the paint of the car. We're gonna bump that up a lot because the Lamborghini is the main character and the star of the show, so we want that color to pop as much as possible. And of course, there's yellow in the paint. Bet you didn't see that coming. We're gonna bump up the saturation a ton because Instagram likes to steal our happy colors and we want to make sure that we overcompensate so when they do, it cancels out. Where are the greens in this photo? Not many places, so we can take them out. What about the light blues? Where is my baby blue? In the windshield, kind of, and I want it all out. Just because bright blues don't belong in the windshield. We can bring down the luminance to darken it a tad, but we'll deal with the windshield in Photoshop. Where are my regular blues? Oh, look at that sky though. That's tempting to keep just because it pairs so well with the yellow, but I wanna make this an angry, mean photo. So I'm gonna pull some of those blues out and we're going to, uh, again, I'm just looking at the windshield because that sky is gonna get replaced in a little bit. It's gonna be tough to replace how good that sky looks. You know what? I have a different idea. Why don't we keep it and just add some lightning? We're gonna just roll with the punches here because it's hard to find a sky that looks this good. We had a good shooting day. All right, and where are the purples? Nowhere, we'll leave the purples alone. What about the light purples? 
Same deal, we'll leave that alone too. Clarity, now do we want it high or low? Now when I bring it low, I lose a lot of detail, but if I bring it too high, it looks a little too messy. So I think I'm just gonna keep it about two. So we add some detail, but it doesn't get too crazy. Now, to make it an action shot, we do wanna drop that vignette just a little bit so it fades the corners. Now, I don't uh, wanna do the vignette too much. I learned that less is more when it comes to vignetting, because if you start to do stuff like this, it gets, just gets a little too crazy, and I don't like that. So we're gonna do a little bit less vignetting because you'll see when we get into our gradients, you'll do the real shading for the photo. All right, now moving down, we're gonna take some noise out of this. A lot of distracting noise. You don't need it in your life. We'll bring sharpening back in the car though. So now that we've worked our way all the way down with all these wonderful tools, we're gonna grab that paintbrush. And you're gonna dip the paintbrush in a little bit of that crimson red. You're going to hit O on your keyboard twice to bring that red up, so it lets you know, hey, this is where we're going to paint. Who knew that you guys were going to get some actual painting in this photo? Now this is a shortcut that I like to use to just separate the car from the background. Some people like to use the pen tool in Photoshop, but you know what? Those people are more talented than I am, so I'll just leave that to them. I prefer the paintbrush, just like my man Bob Ross. All I'm doing is painting the car, the shadows, and kind of a general halo around the car. We don't want to get too precise on the edges just because it adds a nice blending effect if you're not perfect. Remember, there's no mistakes in Will's editing world unless of course you realize it and you want to point it out in his comments. <laughs> oh, spinny wheel guy. It's because my poor computer is trying to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and screen record at the same time. That's okay. Now I'm using the brackets on the keyboard to change the size of this little circle guy here. So yeah, now that we've got the wing painted in, zoom in, and you can see how it's, it's not necessarily perfect around the edges, but it's close enough. And close enough actually works pretty well, just because you don't want a hard separation on the edges and the background. Now this guy got a little crazy. We can bring that flow down to about 50 and kind of get rid of a little bit of this red action because we don't need too much spilling out over the road there. Kind of nice how you can always undo things in Lightroom. Again, there's no mistakes here. We're all just having fun. Alright, now that my car is nice and painted, I'll make sure that my sliders are reset and I'll hit O one more time to get rid of that red paint. And now I'm going to bump up the exposure. Again, don't be afraid if your exposure is too high, we're going to bring it all back with that magical dehaze button. So I'm bringing my shadows so I get detail on the side and the grill. And then I make all the highlights come back down with that dehaze. Look at that sharp detail. Clarity to make it look even more aggressive, but not too much. And maybe just a touch of saturation, just for fun. Now that's a good looking Lamborghini. What are my highlights look like? Oh, we want to keep the highlights exactly where they are. Maybe we can pop the white, just a one or two, see what happens. Give it three white, that's a little too much. How about just one? We'll give it one. All right, so now that our Lamborghini is exactly where we want it, and now that our background is exactly where we want it, it's time to get into the fun part, and that's our gradients. Now you want that eye to go to our main character Lamborghini, remember? Hit O one more time to bring your tool up. And we're gonna drag this at an angle that matches the photo, right about there. Make sure your sliders are reset and bring that exposure down. This is why we didn't go too crazy on the vignetting. I also wanna pull down the saturation because I don't want too much color in that foreground. Go ahead and bring down that exposure even more. Really make it focus on the Lamborghini. Now here's the part where the magic is. That top gradient on the sky is where we can make that sky go from happy clouds to some very angry ones really fast. All I'm doing is dropping the exposure and the saturation. But check this magic out. If you make the temperature just a tad, all of a sudden those skies start to look kind of blue. I had just a touch of purple in. And now there's a little life in those angry clouds. We can bump up the clarity to get some more detail in them, and even the sharpness. If we dehaze it, then it really gets crazy. All of a sudden, look at how mean that sky looks. I might drag this slider down just a tad to get a little more light in the foreground since that sky looks so angry. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, next up, I need to paint in that windshield. 
It's looking like a fishbowl, but we can fix that. We also have a little bit of polarization action going on. Hit that O button two more times to bring up the uh, red paint. We're just going to paint in that windshield as best we can. We'll go back and touch it up later, so don't worry. No mistakes in Will's editing world. Sorry, there's a little bit of lag. My computer sounds like a jet engine right now, trying to power the screen record in addition to Lightroom. And once we're done painting this in, we're going to do some exposure adjustments, we're going to do some saturation pulls, and we're going to make it look a less like a fishbowl and more like a Lamborghini windshield. Using my brackets to make that circle bigger so that it could cover more ground. Now that we got that all painted in, let's get that side mirror, or that side window. Too bad there's not a one-click button, but you know what? Nothing's easy in this world. But it all can be fun. Alright, just pan around that side view mirror, just doing its thing there on the freeway, enjoying this Sunday car rally. Now you notice I'm not getting the edges of this because they're already darker. And if you get those too, it's just going to make the whole window look like it has this extra dark band around the edge. We might paint it in. Sometimes you can and get away with it. Alright, hit that O button one more time and bring back your tools. Now, that looks a little crazy. Let's reset these sliders. And just bring down the exposure just a little bit. Alright, we might end up going in and painting around those edges. I think I'm going to. Shadows down, highlights down. Now it's looking mean. Clarity, so it's a little bit smooth. Pulled some saturation. And noise to the right. I remember noise to the right makes it smoother because lefties like me, if it goes to the left, it makes it harder and grainier. Life is harder when you're a lefty. So go right. Yeah, I think we're going to end up painting around this edge. That's okay. Our settings are already locked in. All I got to do is go around. Bring it around town. A little bit of lag action, but that's okay. Nice and steady, slow wins the race. I've learned that if you spend a little more time, just a little extra time making these just right, it really makes a difference on that Instagram feed. Hey, if your crush likes it, then it was worth the hours you put into it, right? She's still skipping through your stories. All right, almost done with that windshield. Once we're done with the windshield, we're gonna get into Photoshop and it's really gonna get fun there because we're gonna start, ooh, that's a little aggressive. Let's bring that flow down a little bit since our paintbrush is smaller, it can be a little uh, crazier, but that's okay. Anytime the paintbrush gets smaller, it gets more potent. So we can drop that flow just a little bit so it doesn't get too aggressive on these small corners that we're painting. We do need to fill in that part evenly though. Just keep this going around. There's some spots here that we missed. Let's go back. Doesn't have to be perfect. Only the haters will notice. Very nice, very nice. Now that we're almost done painting in this, we're going to jump over to that side mirror and grab that next. Paint in that section there. Ooh, look, we missed a lot of spots on this side mirror. Let's bump that flow up to the 80s, see what goes there. You know who loves the 80s? Every girl in present day. Love 80s parties. All right. Now that that's painted in, that looks so much better. Fill in this edge here. Now, I could probably go back and make this perfect perfect, but I'm sure you don't want to sit around all day and wait on that. So we're just going to get this close enough. Alright. Paint right up to the edge there. We'll give one more pass to the top here. Remember, I have a brush intensity set to 80 so it might take a couple passes before you get it right that's okay now we're going to fill in these spots with level 100 flow that's looking much better 
Now that's a windshield. No one's ever going to know the little precise details unless you print it big, but this will work for Instagram. Now that everything here is where we want it, let's do one final adjustment to that road because I want the road to be a different color than the sky. So we're going to click one more brush, hit O two times, reset our sliders, and just paint the road. You can do a big brush for this, that's okay. Big brush has been sitting on the bench the whole time. It's about time he got some game time. We're going to paint the median wall too because it's the same color as the road. We're going to steal some colors, but by doing so, we're going to make the road more of a star player in this movie. So the road's okay with it. <laughs> this Bob Ross thing kills me. Can you tell what I've been doing in quarantine? Watching Bob Ross videos? I don't even paint. Alright. So it doesn't have to be super perfect. Just get kind of close to the car. Get most of the street. Remember, only the haters will notice. Don't worry about those cars. They're going to go away in Photoshop anyway. They have other places to be. Alright. Scroll down and make your brush nice and big and watch this. Big whoosh. All taken care of. Oop. Touched the car too much there, had to hit undo. There we go. And just one little pass here on the top. It's okay if it touches some grass. Grass is okay of being painted a little bit. That's close enough for today. If we need to go back, actually, we should. Let's erase just a little bit from the car. I don't want to take away too much. Let's take some out of this wheel. I want that wheel color to stay. And that lower grill too. Much better. Maybe some off this wheel too. That wheel color looks wonderful. It shouldn't be messed with. Alright. Hit O one more time and now our tools are gone. Make sure your sliders are reset, and let's pull that saturation out. Look at that road. Now with it in, now with it out. I like it out. We'll dehaze and see what the road does. Nope, don't like that. You can always double click your sliders, and it'll bring it right back to zero. Let's take some of that clarity out, pop some of the whites, so the road really becomes more of a star. That's what I'm talking about. When you bump up the white, it also tends to bring some of those tiny little details out of the road, which is nice it just makes it look a little bit smoother, which is okay with us. But contrast adds some more color back in, which is bringing that road exactly where we want it. Now what if we add a touch of blue? How does that look? Hmm, maybe not too much, but maybe a little bit never hurt anybody. How does a touch of purple look? No, what about green? No, we don't like green either. Let's leave that right where it is with that blue. All right, now our road is in business. Now that all the colors are exactly where I want them, Let's add one little pass here. Those mountains deserve a little more attention. The road can't steal the show. So, let's bring back the tool and mask overlay so we can see we're painting. Let's paint a little detail back in these mountains. They worked really hard to be there. We can give them some grace. Let's paint across here. All right. Perfect. Press O one more time. Bring back the regular brush here. Reset our sliders. And let's just dehaze and add some clarity. Maybe those mountains will come back and play. There they are. What if we brought up the exposure a tad? And then crush the blacks back down so they're not overexposed. Can you see them a little better? Maybe if we added some contrast too. Computer might need to catch up here with me. We could probably add some sharpness, maybe even a lot of saturation. How does that look? Can't tell if my computer's lagging or not. Let me max out my exposure and see what that does. Okay, there's only about a one second delay. All right, I think those mountains are getting the attention they deserve now. Let's make them a little more purple and a little more tan. There we go. Much better. Subtly matching the car. Now that's a photo, but we're not done yet, guys. Right click on this, 
and we're bringing it into Photoshop for those final touches. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have YouTube tutorials on this kind of stuff all the time. And if there's anything that I haven't answered for you yet, drop it in the comments below. I'm sure either myself or one of the guys that subscribes to this channel can help answer it for you because we're all learning this together. All right, welcome to the fun part. I'm gonna start by hitting J on the keyboard, which brings up my heel tool. And we're gonna start taking out small details in the car that we just don't need, starting with that driver's face. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Driver. We're gonna get rid of this little glare here because it's just not very clean, as well as that little block that that rear view mirror puts up there. We don't need that block. Goodbye. We could probably get rid of his hands too. And just leave the edge of the steering wheel and make that driver's life a mystery to everybody. We can get rid of the VIN sticker always. That doesn't matter. Someone had some great advice for me when they said they edit car photos. Even if that car part might belong, if it's distracting and it's not necessary, you could probably take it out and it'll be okay. Kind of like this front sensor. Definitely part of the car, not super necessary. We can take it out. Now you can see as I get closer, this photo is slightly vibrated, but that's okay. My ALA logo on the front, we can take that out too, even though I love ALA on the Performante. Some of these edges and corners just aren't necessary. We can take them out. It just makes the car look cleaner. Some people might freak out if I'm taking out parts of the car, and that's okay. When you edit your car pictures, you can keep them in if you want, but I'm telling you, sometimes it's okay to take them out. Some of these lines, a little distracting. We don't need them. Now, the beauty of this car being shot while it was kind of cloudy outside, not very much glare, not very many distractions. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. I don't see too many distractions here. We can make this curve a little smoother. There we go. Click it and drag. Any other obviously distracting marks in here? Not too many. We can leave that side view glare. A little bit of tree action there. We got rid of that. That's okay. Any other glares on this car? Not many. Got one right here. We can click and drag, click and drag. Get rid of that one. I think that's the median or the side. That'd be the sidewall from the other, other lane. Wheel looks good. Don't see any other glares. Uh, we can keep those glares, help show the edge of the car. Now this guy definitely has to go. So we're going to paint him over and just see what happens. If the AI can take care of it or if we got to do it the old fashioned way. And magic. Look at that. Taken right out. Oh, we can get rid of that little sticker right there. Not needed. We'll get rid of this line here. Don't need that either. All right. Any distractions in the background? Not sure where that little village is, but today it's not a part of the photo. And let's see, we have some odd marks on the median here that could be a bit distracting. Can we get rid of them? Probably better ways to do this, but this is the Bill Co way and it works for now. I don't want to get rid of all the marks because it does add speed to the photo, but maybe some of the little more aggressive ones, they can go. Like that guy. That is very aggressive. Clone stamping might be a more effective way. I'm starting to see some splotches up here, but there's no mistakes here. Yeah, we'll just leave it. Send it. This car, definitely got to go because it's not the Lamborghini. Probably a beautiful car. It's just not the star of the show today. Definitely got to make sure we get rid of all these little cars in the background. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging with the heel tool and letting the computer's AI do the rest. It's a smart computer. Let it do some work. All these cars gotta go. Well, this part's getting pretty sloppy, but I'm pretty sure it'll get cropped out on Instagram anyway. But you know what? If you leave it, only the haters will notice. Definitely sloppy. <laughs> For the ease of time, we're just, you could clone stamp this, you could probably clean it up better, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as a happy little mushy box in the background. It's fine with me if it's fine with you guys. All right, let's get rid of some of these marks on the wall where people ran into it. Oh my. 
California drivers, some of my favorite. How do you hit the median on the inside of a turn? There, there could be some happy mistakes on that car. If you kiss the median. All right. Now to take some marks out of the street. Just a couple of clicks and drags. Now if you wanted to use the clone stamp, all you have to do is press S. And you can clone stamp to your heart's desire. But fortunately, this photo doesn't have too much that's needed for clone stamping. Now, I am looking for imperfections where the sensor may have had uh, some debris on it, but I'm not seeing too much of that. This photo's looking pretty clean otherwise. Now, do we want the road sign or do we not want the road sign? I think I'll keep it. The road sign never hurt anybody. Hmm, I don't know. Second thought, let's try to take it out with a clone stamp so you, can guys, you guys can see. Hit S. Brackets to adjust the circle. Hold down Alt. We'll grab this circle. And then boom. Just like that. Now my clone stamp is set to 42% flow. We want it at 100%. Check this out. Boom. Like it was never there. Changing my mind. I like it. I like it with the clone stamped sign. Whoa. This part of the sign doesn't want to go. Alright. We'll go back to heel and tap J just to get rid of the pole there and let that blend in nicely. And then we'll just make these colors blend and play nicely together just with the heel tool. Just going over the edges. I see a little patch of dark gray here that can probably go. Oh, hello color wheel. I missed you. Hadn't seen you in a while. Color wheel just wants to be appreciated. All right. Now that we've taken out that road sign, I'm seeing now that that was a wise decision. The road looks a little sloppy, but remember, that's our mushy box, and we're going to let him stay. Now that is looking fantastic. Nice, clean Lamborghini. We're missing one thing. All right, so I got my lightning overlay. I found this online by just Googling lightning. Check out how nicely that fits. Drag it up. Make sure you hit screen. It'll get rid of the black background, and just press a check, and then your detail comes right back. I think that looks good to me, but look. There's a little white box around it. That's okay. You can go back to normal. Touch our eraser. Make sure our flow is set up to 100. Click on it. Hit OK. It'll rasterize it, which means that you can play around with it. Then we'll just get rid of that box edge, that harsh edge. And then we go back to flow, drop it down to about hmm, 20, something low, and just kind of get rid of some of this nastiness. Make it a very soft edge. Let's drop the flow even lower than that. Maybe like six. Now, that's much better. Now what we're gonna do is switch that blending mode back to screen. Whoa, not color dodge. There we go. Looking much better. Kinda get rid of some of these edges here. Make that part of the lightning fade just a tad. And now we're in business. What if we duplicated it? Would it make it any better? Not much better. Let's, uh, let's delete that step. It's okay. All right, now we need to color this lightning because it looks like it could be a tad out of place. Put our hue and saturation up there, hold down Alt and click, and now it only will color the lightning, and not your whole photo. I think I might want to erase just some of this right there because we don't need, oops, that was too much. That was too much. I don't want the main bolt gone. All we need erased is just a little bit of this guy right here. Just the subtle, subtle little bolt coming off. I want the main bolt to stay kind of the main character of the sky. All right, there we go. Now that's looking much better. Now it looks like we captured this at the right time. It's missing one thing, a little bit of blur action. Our blur is set to 13%, which is just subtle enough to make it believable that the lightning was actually there. You don't want to blur it too much, but just a little bit because the background is out of focus, so it would make sure if the make sense if the lightning was in focus too. So just adding a little touch of blur to it, but not so much that it looks again out of place. Color wheel just wants to be appreciated. All right, I think that's enough blur action for today. It should appear right there, and maybe just a touch of a uh, paintbrush. We'll give it one more run. Click our paintbrush, plot our point. Remember, we want to see the mask overlay. 
or at least the tools. Let's see the tool, there we go. We're just gonna paint over this area. Just a tad, all kind of in here. I wanna adjust this zone just a little bit. We'll change our flow down just a little bit, kind of blend around that edge. Looking good, okay, bring back our tools. Reset these. Now let's see what that saturation could do. Do we want more or do we want less? I think less looks pretty nice, but I do like the blue in the sky. I kind of miss the blue. There's our blue. What about, it? no, no purple, we don't want purple. Do we want any green? Nope, we don't want green either. Should we crush our blacks? Maybe just a little bit and some clarity? Absolutely, but not that much because that lightning's looking a little too in focus. There we go. Now the lightning is the main character. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I answer every single one. Guys, I drop videos every single Tuesday, every single Thursday, every single Sunday. We are shooting for 10K, so make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell, and I will catch you at the next episode. Peace. I might lie, I, I lie to you just to get through the night I, 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 with you. Hope that's alright. No, you lie, I, I, I lie to me. It's only right.